Hello everyone and today I have a really big topic because finally new Aston Kern flagship SP3000 made their way into our country and I've got a loaner unit to make this review. And as usual it was pretty interesting for me because I owned Aston Kern 320, then I instantly updated to SP1000 after hearing it, then updated to SP2000 after the first initial test, and actually about SP3000, uh, well, that's not the same straight as it was before. Of course, in terms of uh, updates, Aston Kern did a great job, like they uh, you, they waited until uh, Asahi Kase restored their plant, started manufacturing new line, so it's the first portable player to use uh, AK4131 or 4191 and uh, AK4499EX. It's like new Asahi Kase idea to separate uh, digital processing part and analog processing part. So, from one chip into two separate. So here used two digital processing uh, chips and four analog processing chips. And uh, that's just a pre-amplification and then of course goes uh, Ast Aston Kern Ter Teratron or however they called uh, actually the thing that does their main magic. And what is even more important for me now, they upgraded uh, like foundational hardware. Now here used a pretty decent uh, Snapdragon octa-core chipset. They revamped architecture, they revamped uh, software. So a lot of things to deal with that. Uh, the, with that uh, that I consider as a main issue of SP2000. Actually it's not slowliness, but it's just like not being uh, snappy enough. Because SP2000 still shows this... Uh, pleasant animations, but like we've used to more snappy devices with more instant uh, transitions and of course uh, even good interface sometimes uh, uh, asking for something new. And here, here is the silver version, it's made of some, some good stainless steel, they have a lot of information on their website describing on uh, the process what is built here, how it's built and so on. 5.5 inches uh, full HD display and of course Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and tons of different software features like decoding six, uh, 768 kHz, DSD 520, I don't know where people get material with this resolution and more important Wi-4, MQA, Rune uh, and so many other things, I'm not speaking even about streamings or Bluetooth uh, transmission and receiving all is present here, but of course it's still a restricted Android because you can install some applications from the list, but it's not an open Android here. Anyway, let's have a closer look. I've got uh, 256 gigabyte version, silver one. So as you can see, package is pretty, it became like more dull, less fancy because I liked wooden boxes of first two Ultimas and I think that it was a tradition worth holding. Of course, it was less eco-friendly, but uh, let's think it was made of some recycled wood. So, here is probably player itself, but not sure. Let's pick out all these boxes. No, it's not a player. It's, it's uh, some additional materials uh, and probably case or something like that. And actually, you know, even freshly unpacked box uh, looks a bit tear, uh, a bit worn. Not sure, maybe it was before, uh, before me and someone tested it not very accurately because it's a demo unit, of course. And forgot to mention that they actually r raised the... Uh, <coughs> rose the price uh, and it cost now 300 three thousand seven hundred dollars and even more in the euro because euro difference between euro and dollar and also because of taxes and i still can consider ukraine as a part of europe so we have european price here just without european salaries so you're getting a lot of protect protective films and as usual it was too complex for Aston Kern to apply them from the 
uh, during the manufacturing so at least with final with flagship model you getting uh, case honestly it's some goat laser and it has actually let's pull it out some label of manufacturer so probably it's uh, someone famous I'll run but it looks like um, I don't know pretty simplistic so here is case with some extra accessories and here we've got <coughs> flare itself actually I don't know someone who did someone use this player before me and they just accurately put sticker on place or it's a fresh freshly new one and how it actually should be opened let me pause video for a second because I need to open it carefully because I will return it so this seal appeared to be broken before me so it's definitely not a packaged one so it's a demo unit and it opens this way which is pretty interesting in terms of unboxing experience I must admit here Aston Kern as usual did something fancy but I, I'd still prefer seeing here some wooden box because it's actually pretty complex to pull it out probably we need to pull this part it's always like terra incognita how to unpack some new box so we need to open it wider then pull this part actually let's pull player out it's better to do that really carefully and here is player itself protective screen actually it has a really good caption difference in sound quality because the difference in sound is really big here with the previous model um, maybe not in terms of quality but definitely in terms of representation as usual super premium uh, cover for the micro SD slot and here we're getting a typical USB type C cable so as you can see accessory set is usually is basic as usual but at least for now we're getting a case and of course about the design it's definitely great that's what we expect and what we definitely receive from Aston Kern but there is one but it's still really heavy almost 500 grams uh, but of course it's something to expect with stainless steel uh, case but a lot of people awaited for the more lightweight version and what surprised me really a lot is that it actually bigger than SP2000 and it's bigger in every single dimension so it's wider taller and actually even without the case it's uh, thicker so basically without case it looks like SP2000 in case and I remember when SP2000 w was released and I was making first review of it and I said that it's definitely not the pocketable player I I'm, I'm, I, uh, I apologize for that and it's definitely a good pocketable player nowadays if only they made it like 250 grams of weight not more anyway in terms of design 3000 looks great especially this uh, new stainless steel version this uh, sense of polished steel is great with another exception it gather fingerprints like crazy so you can't touch this player without leaving fingerprints and that's the price you pay I don't know any condition how you can admire this uh, stainless steel surface uh, in its uh, pure pristine form maybe you can buy some uh, st desktop stand then wipe it uh, with uh, cloth and put on the stand or you can use actually some white gloves for that and it's traditional bold and uh, edgy design of uh, Astell and Kern. You can see a lot of interesting edges, great work with metal. On the bottom side we have uh, USB Type-C and micro SD slot. And it, you can use it for charging, you can use it uh, for digital tonal converter purposes and so on. Won't be repeating this from, every, uh, from review to review. 
all you can expect from USB Type-C in modern player you'll get. Speaking about the charging, it took about uh, three and a half hours to charge it with uh, Quick Charge 3. And battery inside is pretty impressive, it's 5000 uh, milliamps uh, per hour, but at the same time it gives just up to 10 hours of work and it's on single-ended output, on average volume, regular flag, be probably because that uh, Asahi Kasei new chips uh, consume power as crazy. And uh, actually I remember that it was they used uh, 4497 if i remember right in sp2000 sp1000 then they used 4499 in 2000 and it caused decrease in uh, battery life and now even more advanced chip cause even further decrease there are three buttons for playback control and actually i'm lacking a bit of tactile feedback here of course it wasn't uh, superb even in sp2000 but actually you know they were a bit more comfortable to me. Let's let me pull this case. They also were small, but they had a bit more clickiness. So you press them uh, firmer and get in, get more confirmation of this click. On top there are three outputs: 3.5 mm Pentacon and 2.5 mm. It's great. It's universal and they can uh, all work as a line out. Here is one of the most beautiful parts for all Astelon Kern players, it's a volume knob and also it clicks to turn it on and off. It's as usual and traditionally what we can expect. And under this knob they put a LED indicator, also a traditional step for modern players. It holds really firm with, with almost uh, zero uh, wiggling and it records clicks really well, so really good quality here. Interesting pattern on the back panel, but uh, it doesn't show well on video and it also <laughs> destroyed by fingerprints. Unfortunately, we can't avoid that. And here on the front panel, they actually find uh, used uh, screen with less with smaller edges with less bevel on the bottom side and uh, looks like they even remove this uh, sensor uh, home button because we now have uh, like uh, full featured android buttons for the services for the home screen and to go back screen is pretty good it has nice brightness great viewing angle so it's really good for those you can for the high-end player and it's pretty expectable. Of course it has good response, pretty nice re re registering of uh, touches, so in this aspect it's uh, really well built and in general of course build quality and sense of uh, using touching it is really great. Now let's talk about the firmware and this time uh, it's not a player where I can refer the previous versions of uh, this play. Uh, of this company's products and say like if you saw them you saw this firmware. Of course uh, still some things remind the previous versions of Aslan Kern uh, software but now they finally uh, added new style, added a lot of changes and uh, fully use the new chip, more powerful and fast chipset. And uh, first thing to notice is this uh, home screen. It opens when you press home button and what is fun here, they often open some random album. So they show, they have all albums in your media library, but uh, they are present as nice uh, CDs and uh, always you getting something new when you open. Actually not new, but uh, some new starting album to browse with and often you can just start playing it and enjoy. I like that they added this uh, CD-like frames, but I don't know why actually here this frame is absent, because it was uh, that uh, picture from that screen and uh, still frame would be look logical there. Also they have a more traditional media library with lists uh, of all songs, albums, artists, genres, playlists, folders, 
favorite uh, MQS uh, tracks with higher resolution CD library is that uh, what you've got from the uh, your CD, Aston Kern CD grabber, they have one and also they move the playback settings here as a separate item and you can reorder all these uh, parts and uh, let's see for example albums you can see that list is pretty snappy it scrolls really fast they added some nice animations here with removing toolbars of course they have all the options like to display it as list or as covers smaller and or bigger you can uh, sort it uh, do different operations uh, rename so all the things that we expected to see and from everywhere you can get to this library screen and if you select some track you get to now playing screen it's pretty traditional here track name album cover tapping will open lyrics if they are present add to favorites menu with additional options uh, and now playing list so that's all traditional here but what i really like is that you can swipe it down or back up it's really satisfying gesture that is nicely animated and works pretty fun and also here you can uh, swipe down the menu with options DAR if, is, uh, as I understood it's uh, DSD uh, upsampler and like Aston Kern Connect line out you can turn off gapless playback I don't know why someone have need to turn it off but it's present and here are the settings but before settings let's go to the main menu they created separate menu with some additional features you can activate here Aston Kern Connect you can get access to the services services it's, uh, is that uh, application that you can download mainly it's different streaming services and uh, related stuff you can get access to it from menu or by separate button if you want so in terms of in terms of streaming it's pretty good you can activate file drop to transfer fi uh, files over network you can activate you can activate rune ready equalizer uh, sorry i missed equalizer it's duck filters you can select one of six available options and uh, also you can select time uh, uh, shutdown timer sleep timer and so on i wanted to show you equalizer because it's uh, pretty decent so you can use the linear equalizer selecting frequencies and selecting gain for these frequencies and they show you approximate curve for this as you can see they have a lot of bands but if you want you can go to the advanced and here you're getting uh, like real parametric equalizer so you can select different frequencies you can select what you want to turn it all higher lower you can select additional parameters like steepness of this curve so basically good working uh, parametric equalizer is also present here and uh, of course there are a lot of options like wi-fi bluetooth you can select what bluetooth codecs you want to use you can activate Aston Kern connect and file drop here as well as run ready so there are a lot of ways to change some option Equalizer is also present here. You can activate crossfeed. It sometimes gives a 3D, a better 3D effect uh, in headphones, but usually its, it's result is really mixed one. Digital audio remaster. Oh, it's not uh, resampling, but it's but actually it's also upsampling. So you can turn it on and upsample to PCM high resolution or to DSD. Not sure why it's remaster actually. It's a resampler, but anyway. Duck filter, channel balance, gear plus playback, replay gain, uh, line out, uh, playback settings present here too. CD reaper, USB mode, uh, audio, how to pass it over DSD, SPD conversion if necessary, car mode, notification panel when, where you can select uh, what toggles you want to switch here. And actually rest of the options I think uh, pretty self-explainable because they are clearly labeled and easy to understand and actually you can go back see now playing uh, uh, 
disc and when you have something playing it returns you to now play to currently playing one which is pretty good but uh, it's something to expect so as you can see firmware is really fresh looks nice uh, pretty fast snappy and looks uh, really good so it's one of the biggest updates uh, at least for me and of course about the sound so of course it's uh, really high-end sound with good resolution sense of naturalness dynamics uh, i don't know treble performance and so on but we've already got that in sp1000 and sp2000 and uh, for sp3000 aston kern decided to change sound noticeably so it's a bigger change than uh, it was for the transition from 1000 to the 2000 uh, but uh, this time they actually decided to make sound slightly warmer and a bit more relaxed and I'm not saying that it's warm or it's relaxed it's more warmer and relaxed than the two previous Ultimas and that actually a change that uh, won't satisfy everyone any change won't satisfy everyone but this one is like uh, noticeably bigger than it was uh, acceptable for vast majority of audience and so thoughts about uh, sp2000 are really 3000 are really polar some likes it uh, but a uh, lot of people actually mentioning these forms and i'm among them so my subjective opinion will be at the end meanwhile let's uh, talk about everything step by step of course bass go to maximum depth it has a good body and uh, slam but actually he, he, here starts this addition of weight actually that uh, big kicks they are not performing at maximum speed but instead they getting a bit of additional weight which they make them more full bodied but at the same time bit less natural it's pretty enjoyable experience especially taking into account that it helps to move uh, low uh, notes in uh, instruments uh, low frequency instruments move closer to you make them more full bodied more enjoyable but it's actually a step from the more natural and uh, more natural representation of sp2000 of course resolution is good you'll get a lot of overtone saturation and all that stuff is present here and uh, texturing and other things are also on uh, on the level you can expect from flagship and uh, first example it's rock my soul by louis armstrong actually they have here pretty interesting acoustic bass it's not uh, like accented it's not moved forward but you know at the same time it's recorded the way that you not only hear it but you need to get that feel of it of course to fully experience that you need some great speaker setup because earphones can deliver this bass fully so you uh, sense it with your body but still you getting this impression even with good earphones and actually you know it's first time when i can use my mask with the stock cable with uh, ultima and uh, this player delivers that nicely and you getting this sense uh, but at the same time you're getting a bit of additional weight so this acoustic bass is slightly more present in the mix than with more natural sp2000 and uh, a second example so sorry not this way it's uh, loverman by metallica not the perfect record but uh, still pretty good especially compared to their later recordings and in my opinion it's the greatest song they performed ever or one of the greatest and uh, it's of course it's a great uh, source source material by by nick cave great song in his uh, presentation but here i think uh, hatfield hit the tops in terms of uh, vocal performance and the uh, bass here is omnipresent and it's built a great uh, nice foundation so this uh, player delivers that really nicely and uh, that slight added weight doesn't change much here because it's not uh, some acoustic instrument that uh, requires 100 percent neutrality to sound fully so this kind of bass is really nice and that uh, slightly added weight doesn't change much here 
Mids are good, of course. First of all, you're getting that uh, signature Astellan Kern mids with that fluid notes transitions, and it's still magical, especially when you experience this for the first time. You uh, hear all notes crisp and clear, but at the same time they transition like uh, not like two notes, but one note separately transition to another. It's hard to explain if you haven't heard, but I think those who've heard Astell and Kern players with their signature coloration uh, get the whole idea. Sometimes things are hard to describe with words. Of course, I'm not speaking about resolution, balance, dynamics, emotions and stuff like that. When it's present in the record, it will be uh, played at full scale with perfect uh, artistism and uh, refinement. Player is pretty critical for the material quality, but not because it super highlights some issues, but because for such uh, top level you need best material that all components will fit uh, one each other and there won't be a bottleneck. It's, you know, sometimes uh, sad to get top of the line player for really a lot of money and at the same time uh, limit its usage due to not perfect material. And also this worms is present here, it sounds like, you know, a bit of more of that signature. For me it's like, uh, you know, SP2000 more like uh, AK320 and this one is more like AK380. It has a bit more of that signature and it may it sound more weightier, maybe it can be called more musical, but at the same time its uh, speed and uh, refinement is a bit uh, sacrificed to get this additional, uh, additional worms. It's not warm, but it's slightly warmer. And uh, anyway, it builds a great stage, both in width and in depth. I like uh, width and separation of the sources of instruments more here, but at the same time I like depth layering of SP2000 more. But of course, stage is absolutely subjective and it's just my uh, experience with it. And uh, let's go to the examples. First one, it's uh, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. I just like this track, I like how it develops from slow to faster, faster and to the maximum speed. And also I really like that uh, courage that Queen showed with these lyrics. Uh, it was, I think it was uh, pretty provocative for that time. But of course it's also great vocal, nice um, instrumental part, uh, decent uh, record quality. Especially in different remastered versions, uh, you're getting even more of that. Uh, and of course this player delivers it nicely, but uh, on the Brian May's guitar you hear that it's a bit uh, like not shifted in tones, but it's a bit more weightier. And another great example, uh, probably it considered as rock music, but you know, in my opinion it's uh, simply the music. And uh, if you want to hear some good music, really recommend you albums by Robert Plant starting with this uh, 2002 and uh, later on, because it ha uh, he released few really great albums, uh, then Mighty Rearranger and uh, next one, they are absolutely great. Good musicians, uh, nice vocal and re interesting instrumental parts. And uh, here actually it's also this coloration a bit noticeable because the plant gets a bit more uh, body in his vocal. Just a little tiny bit, but it's audible. And uh, in general I actually can't say that I dislike it. But at the same time I can't say that it's like something that uh, changed for good. It's just a change basically, prob uh, probably it's better to consider that as a change in general and is it for good or for bad, it's a debatable question. And the treble, as usual, it's uh, the absolutely strongest part of Astral and Kern, Kern players, at least for me. I pay a lot of attention for the treble, I like that they show maximum extension, I like that they didn't change uh, treble too, mu uh, too much compared with 2000, because for me it was close to perfection and I had no idea 
what to do with treble to make it even better. Really good attacks and decays, uh, perfect uh, layering, saturation, overtones, tiny nuances, airness, all that things that we can expect from the good player. We can hear with this one but uh, to my ears it shows a bit less extension not by much but a bit less extension than sp2000 maybe just my perception so i can't say that anything i say is absolutely 100 percent truth i just show my experience i sp spent some time a bit testing and actually that what i've heard here but still really great performance in terms of technical stuff and no oh, Bill Dugma album cover was pretty provocative too for its time. So first one is Miles Davis, black satin from the on the corner. Some time some time ago, uh, I've got comment from uh, uh, from one of the viewers that like uh, what you can uh, evaluate uh, with this album. It's absolutely bad. Uh, go to the a kind of blue and honestly i understand that a kind of blue is absolute masterpiece innovative and so on but i really like other works of Miles davis because they sound more lively like like less academic work and more of uh, closer to actually street music that he tried to deliver here and i like a lot of additional audio effects i like uh, great improvisation and of course uh, all that stuff requires great treble performance that uh, this player delivers and another example actually where i uh, a b tested that uh, extend treble extension it's uh, cadence and cascade by king crimson and here i've heard a bit uh, smaller extension in the treble but still i enjoy performance and overall uh, representation of treble its balance and so on so it was actually the sound of sp3 uh, uh, thousand it's fun enjoyable but a bit uh, unexpected for me and for many others too but a lot of people also like this change of course and speaking about the comparisons actually there is not much players in this segment and main competitor is sp2000 because it's still top of the line player of course it's uh, lacking the speed it's uh, i mean speed of interface and lacking pentacon and tons of other modern features but at the same time it has more storage and now it's available for a really pleasant price and actually if you uh, slightly tight on budget like i mean tight in terms of you don't want to spend uh, almost 4k of bucks and you're okay with spending like about 2k and then sp2000 is really great option it actually happens uh, the same as it was with aston kern 320 because it also due to reducing price still was a really good option for quite a long time and i really hope that uh, Aston Kern has a lot of uh, SP2000s in stock to sell as a more budget-friendly option. Actually, Kane N82 uh, I've tested some time ago, but you know, Kane just uh, making step aside. It's really good per performance in terms of technicality and stuff, but at the same time they have their own vision of the sound uh, that uh, uh, more driving more groovy with more emotions they have different options of uh, engaging tubes and so on so it's like totally different uh, uh, in to compared to ultimas and it's a matter of your preferences of course and uh, about the drivability of course uh, 6 volts rms it's pretty enough lot lot of reviewers say that it's too too few it's not enough to drive to drive power hungry planars but of course it's not but in general vast majority of headphones like normal ones without uh, requiring of some superpower will be driving properly and of course earphones are just great with this player because of uh, nice black background and other stuff so it performs really well with them and actually to summarize the main question is like uh, is it worth its money or not and it's pretty complicated because it depends on your taste in sound 
and your willingness to get one of the flagships. As I've said in the previous review of SP2000, if you want best price to quality performance, then Aston Kern Ultimas are not an option. Like in the segment from 1000 to 2000 dollars, you can get much more players with better price to quality uh, ratio. The Ultimas are always about getting just absolutely best, not relatively, but absolutely. And the SP3000 delivers great sound uh, and still is like uh, best Aston Kern offer. But uh, they have now strong competitor in with their previous model, which you can get for less. But at the same time, you can get really good sound with a bit different representation. So, to me, it's not like upgrade; it's more of side grade in terms of sound. But of course, you're getting a lot of new features. So, having a SP2000, I don't uh, recommend you upgrade without testing. Just uh, listen to 3000. Maybe you like its signature more. And then you can safely make a purchase. And if you're buying first player and you want to get it for a long time, and uh, you can want to get like absolutely best by Aston Kern, of course, 3000 is your option. It will have longer support time, it has more, more modern chipset, mean, and the Android version, meaning longer support of applications and other stuff. But if you really like sound of SP2000, upgrading is not like, especially blind one is not a great option. And uh, subjectively, I won't upgrade this time because I have to spend too lot of money. And uh, despite all my willing to have the newest one, I'm not convinced that uh, sound change is worse upgrade, especially to me. But it's just my subjective opinion, so. That's it, have a great day.